Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of a follow-up to our 3D scanning video using the Corality CR Scan Otter. Now, the question that came in was around why I use the medium size mode as opposed to the small. Basically, if we're trying to reverse engineer or do anything with a machined or mechanical part, wouldn't we just use the smallest resolution option? Well, there's kind of a lot to unpack there. Unfortunately, it's not quite as straightforward or simple as that. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the choice or the decision on why you pick a certain mode over another. We're gonna look at examples of scanning the triple clamp in both the small, the medium, and the large mode, and hopefully give you some more information on how this works with this scanner and why you would choose one mode over the other. Now, if you didn't watch the first video on us going through, we did scan this in real time, the scanning process, including the, the post process of the points and the mesh. So if you wanna follow along with that, make sure that you do check that video out. You can click on the link on the, on the screen here. Uh, if you just want more information about the scan modes, then make sure that you stick around in this video. So the first thing that we're gonna do is scan the triple clamp with the small size mode. Now, remember that the small, medium, and large size modes access different depth cameras or different depth camera options. And generally they're between 50 millimeters to 250 millimeter for the small size. Now triple clamp is a bit bigger than that. So what that means is it's clipping a portion of the triple clamp. Uh, so it can't see everything, which makes tracking much harder. And that's one of the reasons why I picked the medium size mode for this part was because it could see pretty much the whole triple clamp which means that tracking is much easier. So in this first section here, we're scanning it with this small object size, which again is between a 50 millimeter cube and a 250 millimeter cube. And the resolution is as uh, accurate or as small as possible with the scanner. So it's claimed at 0 0.02 millimeters. What we're gonna see when we actually process the mesh is the uh, resolution option that we have can go down to 0 0.05. Uh, that's pretty typical when you're talking about actually refining the mesh. But the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it's slower. Um, when you're scanning on the small mode, it's capturing a lot of data. It's capturing more points to get that finer resolution. And this means that the scanning frame rate is generally gonna be a little bit slower. And it also means that it's just gonna be harder or take more time for you to scan that object, especially something that's a bit big for this mode. The other thing that you're gonna to start to notice because the scanner can't see as much of the object is it's gonna have a harder time tracking it. Now, the tracking algorithm in the Creality scan is actually pretty good, but it's only good if you're using the correct size mode. If you're, in this case, using the small mode on an object that really should be scanned with medium, then what you're gonna see is that it has a lot more trouble finding or tracking that object in 3D space. I still use the exact same setup, the triple clamps raised up. I've got the small pieces of paper towel crumpled up around it for tracking. But what ends up happening is when you're in the good or optimal range for the distance, then it starts to clip some of those things. So if we're scanning the top of the triple clamp, it can't actually see the table or bench and it can't see those paper towel pieces or those extra little features that we're using to help tracking. So what this means is it's really relying on just the triple clamp, which has straight edges, it has repeating or symmetric features, especially as we get around the fork clamp area and it wraps around. You can see here in our um, RGB camera in the bottom left, I'm not moving at all. And in the center screen, it's spinning around, which means that what's happening is it's lost tracking because that feature is just a true arc around the outside, it doesn't know what to do. Now, this is something we didn't really see with the medium size mode, but it's definitely apparent in the small size mode. So you might be thinking, okay, well, why don't we just use markers? So let's go ahead and retry this small size mode, but this time with markers. Now this does work a little bit better, but remember I mentioned that with markers, you really have to have several in view at all times. So generally four to five randomly placed markers need to be visible in order for it to get proper tracking. So with a triple clamp, what this means is we really have to be careful where we place these, especially since the part has symmetry. Even with these markers, I'm still struggling to get tracking at the very beginning. So we have to go extremely slow until we capture enough data that it, it knows where these markers are in space. 
I'm going to speed it up here 10 times just so you can get a feel for um, the speed here. Now, 10 times for the small marker tracking mode is actually about the normal speed in medium mode. So if I'm just going through and scanning the object, so just keep that in mind. It's about 10 times slower. When you do have marker tracking mode and you process, there is an option to remove the markers, but uh, it's something that you just kind of have to deal with. So now let's take a look at large mode. Now this is obviously not the right mode for scanning something this small. There are some initial tracking issues, but what you'll notice is that in order to be in the optimal or, or sort of the good distance range, we need to have some pretty unique features in the scene. If I just do the triple clamp on the bench, you can see it instantly starts to smear. So you need to have something else. In this case, the back left corner, I've got part of the actually the Creality little suitcase for the scanner and the power brick for the laptop and some other things. And it really needs those features to help with that initial tracking. So on large mode, we're not gonna capture any useful data that we could use to, to measure or reverse engineer the triple clamp. But just to give you an idea on what that looks like, you can see that we are capturing the triple clamp. We're capturing the bench and a lot of the other stuff that's sort of floating around. Uh, I even scan up the wall a little bit so we can see, in this case, I've got the, the discard hanging there on the wall and some other things that we can, uh, can sort of just pick up in this frame. So large mode, definitely kind of out for something like this. You'd really use it for larger objects if you were scanning a, um, you know, a car fender or something like that. You can even see at the end, it started to lose tracking. So just for some comparison, this is the medium mode, which I'm not going to go through completely because that's what we did in our previous video. I still left the markers on, which is a problem downstream because I'm not using marker tracking. But just so we can get an idea of sort of the speed to scan, we can see here that instantly after capturing a couple of frames, I can move around the triple clamp quite a bit faster. Now in our video, when we walk through sort of real time, I did go slower. You can certainly go faster as long as the, the object on the screen is turning green. That means that you've capture the data you need. And again, I'm not going to go completely through this, but just to give you an idea of, of how much faster you can move when you're using the medium size mode, because it can see more of the object and it knows quite a bit better where everything is in 3D space. It doesn't have to worry too much about losing that tracking. Now on the processing side, when we're processing a scan that was done with the small mode, when we're optimizing the points, this allows us to go down to a resolution of 0 0.05. So when you're doing the small mode 0 0.05, on the medium mode, that resolution goes down to about 0.1. On the large mode, about 0.2. The, the scan results here honestly are not drastically better than on the medium mode. And, and really what this comes down to is how far apart you need those points in 3D space to capture the details that you need. Now, if we're talking about small figurines or characters that have a lot of minute details, that's really where that small mode comes into play. For something like this, the medium mode is gonna give us plenty of resolution to capture the details and data. And I wouldn't necessarily directly pull measurements or data off of the scan to reverse engineer it. I would still manually measure those things. So when we look at the, the same scan done on small mode, but with the markers, again, there's really not much of a difference here. We just have a remove marker mode when we're doing the point processing. And it's not perfect. If you put those markers too close to another feature, like for example, where the bar mounts are, when we put those too close to another feature, what ends up happening is it doesn't have enough data surrounding that marker to cleanly remove it. So it ends up leaving some in a couple of awkward places that you may or may not be able to manually clean up if you're not careful. And as I mentioned, I, I tend to avoid markers unless I absolutely need them. Using unique features like crumpled up pieces of paper are much easier for us to sort of pull out as we are, are manually cleaning things up. Now, there's no point in going through the process with the large scan because again, we're not gonna get any data that we're gonna use off of it, but just to kind of give you an idea of what it pulls in, it actually can pull in quite a bit of information. I've got a couple of brake rotors there that it, it grabbed and obviously some cleaning chemicals and things like that. 
And of course, the media mode, which is again what we did for our tutorial in the previous video. Now, remember I left those markers on when I did this and you can see how bad it is. Because we're not using marker tracking, there really is no manual or automatic marker removal. So I'd have to go through and manually cut all of those out of the points and then allow it to fill those holes when I mesh it. Just for some basic comparison, let's take a look at the triple clamp scan that we did in our tutorial or in our how-to video. So you can kind of get an idea of how it looks. Now, there are some areas where the texture is quite a bit rougher, things like where the fork clamping area is. Those are much more difficult because we can't get a perpendicular view with the scanner. But some of the areas that look like they're deformities, like right on the edge here, that's actually where the, uh, the clutch line is, and it wears a little spot on the triple clamp. And there are some extra lines where the bars mount, and that's, again, just deformation from use. But overall, we can pretty much read the part number, and I can see it says 17 Newton meters on the clamping area of the fork. It's not perfect, but those are the details that we don't necessarily need if we're trying to just get a, a general reverse engineer of this. Now, let's go ahead and hop over to Fusion. What I did here in Fusion was I created a mesh section sketch inside of the fork where it clamp, or inside of the triple clamp where it clamps the fork. I applied an arc. And the arc measured out 53.924 in diameter. The actual measured value on the clamp itself was 53.9242. So down to three decimal places uh, um, in the metric unit system, down to three decimal places with the medium scan mode, that tells me that the accuracy here is pretty darn good. I, I mean, I would not have expected it to be that close between measuring the the triple clamp manually and getting a mesh section sketch in Fusion. Now the mesh section sketch, the arc of course is fitted based on those mesh points, but it was actually out to like four decimal places in accuracy. It wasn't, it wasn't wildly off. So it actually did a really good job of fitting that arc in there. So again, it's important to remember that when we're dealing with scanners in this sort of price segment, when we look at the, the options that we have in the software, whether it's scanning small, medium, or large objects, when we're talking about things like precision and accuracy, what we're really looking at is the, the distance between points in 3D. Now, as you scan bigger objects, you start to lose accuracy. So basically the points can get further and further apart. When we're talking about scanning an object like this that pretty much fits into a single view, then you end up you end up getting a pretty accurate model despite the fact that we're not using that small mode. The small mode doesn't inherently get us better accuracy, but it just means that the points are closer together in 3D space when we're capturing that data. So you will end up seeing some loss of uh, fidelity of a model if you've got a lot of sharp corners or if you have a lot of casting details, things like that, where you really need those points closer together. But overall, when we're talking about using something like this, the small mode doesn't just get us a better model. It's still extremely accurate for us using the medium mode. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, is this really a CMM type thing? No, I don't think so. There are so many extra variables that come into play when you're trying to accurately measure something or inspect something after machining or after manufacture. And I really don't think that this is the tool for that. But if you're trying to scan your own parts and you're trying to either create something that fits those parts or reverse engineer it and make a variation of it, uh, it's, it's certainly a perfect tool for the job. Now, if you have any more questions on this, then please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.